Welcome to Drum and Drummer, a podcast focused on drums, drumming and drummers. I'm George Pickering and that's Ben Winty and we are both professional drummers in this business we call music. So stick around and join us as we pass the time whilst trying to stay in time. Direct quote, they're getting a little bit too big for their boots. <laughs> Welcome to Drum and Drummer. Welcome. It's us again. Yeah, just us. No guests. No. But oh, we're guest. all you need in life. Yeah. That's what I've always thought. That's what Unless the Unless you're looking think. for hair. <laughs> then look somewhere else. This is episode eighty six. Yep. Anything we can say about eighty six? Was there a World Cup in eighty six? Um probably was actually, yeah. Yeah. Was it Mexico? Might have been Mexico. How old were you in eighty six? One year old. One year old. One years old. <laughs> <laughs> depends when Our, depends when in eighty six. Yeah. Really? Yeah. At the start, seven months. Mm. At the end, <laughs> you do the math. <laughs> you know? Yeah, good. Yeah. How are you? Good, man. Yeah, okay. Um, had a lovely walk in in the sunshine. Is it sunny in Portsmouth? Uh, very sunny. It's, very, it's kind of sort of cloudy here. Yeah. Have you been having the storms? Yeah, it was a bit thundery the other day. Mm. A little bit thundery. Yeah. Um... You know? It was stormy on Saturday, which worried me. Why did it worry you, George? Because I went to see Paolo Nittini in Brighton. Yes. And about, I don't know, two or three in the afternoon, just torrential rain, thunder, maybe lightning. And we were like, shit. And it mattered because this was an outdoor gig. This was an outdoor it gig. It was an outdoor yeah. gig. Yeah. Stanmer Park. Uh, thankfully lightened up by then and was a lovely sunny afternoon in the in the Stammer Park. But I'm gonna go in with a rant. I'm gonna please, I'm gonna do please. some venting, you know. Yeah. Vent on me, like, George. I am your soundboard. <laughs> um come at me boy, what you got? Well I went to the gig, Palinatini, Stammer Park with Elfie. And <laughs> we don't know if it's because we're getting old. Yeah. Or is it people have changed at gigs? Because okay. when I used to go to, you know, outdoor gigs, I used to have a lovely time. Yeah. You know. What Arts was a lovely monkeys. time for you? Well, just being close up to the stage at Arctic Monkeys and it's fucking mental. And you're like, this is it. This is it. And any of those stadium gigs, any big gigs outdoors or anything, I'm like, this is brilliant. But I don't know, recently gigs i've gone to have just been a bit something part of it is the phones i think people filming on their phones mm. so that is really a big problem and i know everyone talks about it but it's like he'll play a song everyone knows you know say he starts playing scream funk my life sure. up, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. the first song he played that was sort of a hit. You know, he played some of the new album, no one really knew, and then he starts with that. People cheer, and then instantly, it's just a sea of phones, and then you're just watching through someone else's phone. And there was even one woman who started FaceTiming her mate who was in bed. So suddenly, I'm trying to see Paolo, because we were quite close to the front, but I could just see this guy on a FaceTime call on this woman's phone, he was just in his bed. I was like, "What? what is this? Why can't... I don't know. I'm trying not to be too... Like, why can't people be in the moment? But why can't people be in the moment? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. you're going to post it to your Instagram and someone will be like, oh my God, I'm so jealous, you know, and that'll be it. And then you'll and, never look at it again. And you'll never look at it again. And it's... Because it's, the sound quality yeah. is rubbish. This is it. The and video uh, quality probably rubbish yeah and i think it was that but also because it was in brighton and it was in a park it was sort of like the problem i have with victorious festival not to rant about that i don't know if it's better now but it wasn't his crowd do you know what i mean so when i went to victorious and watched say noel gallagher or the libertines it wasn't a libertines gig it was, you know, a lot of families who just happened to live in South Sea and go, oh, we'll go out for the day and we'll take a picnic, you know, and then go and watch the Libertines, you know. And so it just isn't their crowd. So it was a lot of sort of 
people that had heard one Paolo song and then gone, oh, we'll go for that. So they talk through the whole set. And then when he finally plays, I don't know, Candy or Coming Up Easy, one of his hits, then they start singing. But then they're not even singing. They're just filming it on their phones. And uh, yeah, it was just, I don't know. It was just not good. And we were sort of just watching going, I'm not really having a good time, you know? Yeah. But I think it is, yeah, it's part of that. It's part of the old, it wasn't a Paolo gig. It was people going, oh, we'll go, and we'll go to that day out who have heard one Paolo song. But also the phones, man. It's just, it's just a sea of people filming. And you're like, fuck's sake, just put your phone down. And we actually like, before he did his encore, we kind of got away from the front and went, you know, more to the back. And it was way better there because it was sort of like, I don't know, there was actually people dancing. But yeah, it's just a shame, I think. I think, you know, I'm already old enough to see how it's changed. You know, when I went to see Arctic Monkeys 10 years ago, there was a few phones out, but it would be like to take a quick picture or whatever. Yeah. And then it was straight back to like the mosh pit or dancing or whatever or throwing piss or, you know, it was just crazy. And I know it's a different act, but it just seems like now it's everyone just films it and you're like, no one's watching this. And I think it must be different for the band as well because they must be playing. And I've I've even had it. I played a Ren gig last year and obviously it wasn't a massive gig. But I remember the front row, everyone was just stood there with their phones, not moving, just filming. And you feel really like, I don't know, like on edge. Like then they're just, they're just filming me really intensely. And you think, yeah, if you're a band and you look out and no one's dancing or singing, they're all just standing there with a phone. It's like that must kill it a bit, you know, as a mm. performer. But um, yeah. I hear, you, I hear you, boy. You know I, I mean? hear you. And that's why about 20 years ago, I stopped going to gigs. <laughs> what? Why? Because of phones? No, just, uh, I think in general, just people. Mm. People are annoying. Yeah. Big groups of people, even more annoying. <laughs> Loud music, annoying. <laughs> Outdoors, especially annoying. Yeah. I know what you're saying. Like, people went for the event not for the band like mm. do you know what I mean I, I've heard people talk about Glastonbury a bit like that people just go because it's Glastonbury yeah not because they're really into an artist they want to see mm. you know but that makes sense with Glastonbury because that is a bit I think people do just go to Glastonbury regardless of who's playing but I think it's the thing of yeah it, if when it's but just but these people just band, go in because it's like, oh, we could have a lovely day out. Yeah, I think it is in that. The park, yeah, not because they're like, I'm a massive Paolo Martini yeah, fan. Yeah, yeah. And I think you know, when I saw Noel Gallagher at Victorious, it was like that. It was just families who had come for the day, and they were waiting for Wonderwall. And he played Wonderwall, and they all sang along. But then, other than that, they just went back to chatting. And it's just a, you know, the whole yeah. crowd is just people talking. Going, also, as well, George, you are getting older. I am getting older. So that, but that was it. It was going. Is other people changing, or are we just getting older? You know. I, I mean, mean? The, the other Friday night, I was at home, and I thought, oh, the worst thing in the world right now would be to go out. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just so n nothing appeals about it. No. I'm very happy at home here. Yeah. Very and happy. that's fine. And that is fine. It is and fine. I think... Um, I was talking to Neil at our gig on Saturday because you ducked out of our gig to go I to did, this yeah. Paolo yeah. Martini gig, dipped yourself out. Mm. All valid. Mm. Um, probably regret it now. But um, yeah. <laughs> there was something weird about the gig and it was like, I think we're just getting older, just done so many. It's like, uh, it's just weird. There was just but a bit of a... Weird but, vibe. Well, do you know what? I, I think it was... I don't even think it was also just the getting older. I think I was wanting the crowd to be a bit more up for it as well. Because I think as much as crowds can be too much, I was thinking, well, if everyone was jumping about and it was a bit crazy, then it would be like, yeah, this is mental and I'm up for it. I mean, you wouldn't really get it at a Paolo gig. But I think it was the fact that the crowd was so boring 
you know what I mean? And it was like, is anyone even enjoying this? And so it's maybe not crowds and things like that that are the problem. It's the people within them, you know what I mean? Because last week or whenever it was at Arctic Monkeys, it was mental, you know, but I quite liked it because it's like, oh, I can't move and there's just, you know, drinks everywhere and it's a bit, you know, crazy mm. and packed in. But does but Paolo Natini, is that going to invoke... No, it's not. But I think that I was like, I just want a bit more. I just want people to, if it's your favourite song, just sing along and have a dance. Don't just Don't go, oh, along. I love this Let one. Let him do it. You know what I mean? He's <laughs> the one. I'll tell you what, what, what do you, what are your thoughts on this? You're, right. So during Coming Up Easy, a man proposed to his wife right beside us and everyone cheered and even Paolo noticed what was going on. And he dedicated it to them. In those situations, yeah, go on. I fucking hope she said no. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I knew that'd be your response. I don't think you should put people under that pressure. No. Because it's funny, isn't it? Because part of it is very sweet, you know. She said yes, their kid was there, blah, blah, blah. But also, he's making it about himself, you know what I mean? Look at Paolo's me. hit. And suddenly it's not Paolo's moment anymore i mean i know yeah. paolo gets a different moment every night you know oh actually that's one more thing i actually saw him going into his hotel before the gig it was about two in the afternoon i was with my friend amy and we were walking along and i went oh my god it's paolo and he was you know two feet from us and she looked at him and he looked at her and she just went where and i was like right there we're both looking at him he was sort of behind the door as he'd gone in the hotel. I was like, that must have just killed any, you know, ego or confidence he had. Where's Paolo Nettini? Um mm. But yeah, weird gig. Sorry, yeah, I'm rambling well, on. That's all right. You get, you're getting old and um, <laughs> the joys of life are crumbling before your very eyes. Yep. You're nearly 30. It doesn't get any better. Uh, we're going to move next? on because, yes, I had a gig Saturday and I'll keep this brief. Gig was fine. Played well. Drum sounded big in the room. Um, But one thing was there was a pizza van. Yep. Supplying sort of evening food. One thing, we were meant to get food from the caterers. They forgot the groom was pissed off (laughs) that we weren't fed by the caterers. Anyway, help yourselves to some pizza. There's a pizza van. There's two ways of doing a pizza van, in my opinion. Yep. You make a fuckload of pizzas and you put them out. That's the way you should do it. And that is the way you should do it. If you run a pizza van <laughs> that you take around to weddings, if you are a bride and groom booking pizzas for your wedding, it is the new hog roast. Hog roasts are dead. Mm, thank pizzas God. Pizzas are the new... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The number of pigs I've eaten. <laughs> Surely I've eaten one whole, at least one whole pig. Yeah. By now, in that eight-year stint. After a decade before COVID, just hog roast, hog roast, hog roast. Four a week sometimes. <laughs> Fucking sick. Anyway, um, this if you are hiring a pizza, please check how they are delivering the pizzas to the people. <laughs> if they go, oh, people come up and order and we make a pizza, do not book them. Mm. It, you're waiting for fucking ages. Yeah. There was just a queue for ages, and then what happens is we have to go back on. Yeah. It's not all about us. But then people miss most of our second set. Yeah. Because they stood waiting for a pizza. Anyway, just wanted to... No, we had just, that. Just, pe- just, fuck, just make, make a fuck ton of pizzas. <laughs> just make a fuck ton yeah. of pizzas and put them out. Keep making them. Just That's literally all you need them. to do. I must have told the story of Pizzagate on here, so I won't do that again, um, where the woman basically gave us one pizza for the band. Yeah. A little handmade tiny pizza. And then we tried to get more and she was very angry. And then a child saw what was going on. And he tried to give us a pizza and she shouted it's not for the band and then stole it off the child before he gave it to us. But we've had a few recently where it's been like that. So this woman made me a pizza and I was like you know, it's basically each band member was going to have a pizza. And Lennon finds this hilarious. He keeps bringing it up. She went, do you want the whole one? And I went, yeah, if that's all right. And she, and then she didn't say anything. So I was like, oh, um, or half? I don't know. What am I allowed? 
Yeah, yeah. And then she just cut me half. And then that was it. And I was like, the fuck? And Lennon was like, well, you just taught yourself out of a whole pizza. They were doing halves, but yeah. he didn't know. They were giving out boxes. Yeah. So there's four of us. I mean, I said, oh, pepperoni, pepperonis. So what they did was they just made a pepperoni, mm. did it in halves, two boxes. And then Neil and Baz, uh, Neil was like, I'll have pulled pork. And then she went, pulled pork for you? And Baz was like, no, I'll have the vegetarian. And her face was visibly annoyed. Yeah. Because they got to make, they can't just do the, let's make one pulled pork no. and cut it in half. we got to no. make two separate pizzas. That's your, fi- you know, that's your job though, isn't it? Making this is pizzas. This is what I've found about these pizza people. So They're annoyed. All of don't, them. It's like they're going, oh my God, we, we're having to make loads of pizzas. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's half it's eight year. at night. Yeah. And people are, and there's a hundred people, people at this wedding. Yeah. And they're like, oh, pizza, booked. let's get a yeah. pizza. And they're like, what? We've got to make a hundred pizzas? We've got to make more. Yeah. Yeah. There was a guy the other day. Who went, sort of right. why you're there, innit? Yeah. <laughs> there was a guy the other day. There was a queue and he went, right, I've got seven more balls of dough and then I'm done. Like <laughs> he just announced it. <laughs> and he was angry the whole time. I don't even know how many balls of dough make but a pizza. It's like, you, you got must. Kibbies. There's, think of how many loopholes or no, how many hoops you got to jump through to make to become a pizza van person at a wedding. Like, you don't just accidentally, oh, fucking hell, how have I ended up in this job? You know, you've got a, it's your business. You buy the van, you make the website, you make dough. I don't even know how you make dough. You make the sauce, do all the stuff, sign up for a business loan, all that. And then they just seem annoyed at every event. They, I'm like, you you did this. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Although, I look annoyed when I'm playing. Well, this is it, yeah. So, but I'm not surprised when they want live music. Yeah. So, anyway, just if you're booking a pizza van, make sure they just, they're on the ethos of just make a fuckload and put them out. Put them out. Uh, We're going to rattle through some more stuff. There's loads going on. There's loads going on. Um, I know we talked about Glastonbury the other week. Mm. Elton John is living my dream. (laughs) Right? What, married to David Furnish? Absolutely. After his customer is set, I heard this. I've not fact checked it, but mm. I heard this. He finished playing. Mm. He was home in 39 minutes mm. because he left the stage, got a little golf buggy, <laughs> driven to a helicopter, yeah, which then flew him straight to Windsor in his in his garden. He was home 39 minutes it's amazing, after finishing isn't it? that. That's what I want. Yeah, that is what I want. Yeah, sure. I've not written as many hits, <laughs> but. I just and I just go absolute fair play. Yeah, that 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 is the dream. It is the dream. Well, you well think, done. You think about how long it takes to get out of any gig. He would have been in his house before a lot of people have got out the main arena. You know. Yeah. 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 Like I remember you reading. You longer to take a piss. Yeah. Did you hear? Like people when they get to the front really early. To, to be at the front for a headliner mm. at like something like Gus mm. they'll just like piss in bottles and, and and just piss themselves yeah so they don't have to leave the spot to yeah. go to the loo yeah and that's why I'm forever grateful <laughs> that the BBC show it on iPlayer <laughs> really yeah, yeah. anyway uh, another little bit of Gus chat obviously Jack Geary played yeah Gus made a number one album mm. so well done Maisie. fair play yep you know um yeah. A um, <laughs> <laughs> couple of uh, f- uh, wedding requests we've had. Oh, or in your yeah. case, a non-request. Right, this is brilliant. So I've got a wedding on Saturday. Usually you get, well, you always get requests, you know, with the agency we're with. Ten requests. What it is, well, yeah, it's, well, it's, the the agency will ask the client from our repertoire on our website. Mm. Uh, some of it we've never played. Yeah. Never will. Please list your top ten favourites, mm. and it is suggested that we will then play those top ten. Yeah, I'm aiming for seventy percent. Yeah, because yeah. and this is weird. Get Lucky's coming back around. <laughs> People are putting that in this in their requests. What are you doing? Yeah, you have all the music. Yeah, you want that rubbish? Anyway, so we had a request not to play. They said, "Do not play Brown Eyed Girl." For, fa- mm. for family reasons and I'm like first of all what is the family reason you know I really yeah, want to know yeah. like because what is I'd, the only thing I can think 
Well, the thing I thought is maybe it's like family members just died and it was their favorite song or something like that. Do you Could know what well I mean? Be. Could well like, be. Like they've just they've just had the funeral for their nan and they played yeah. Brown Eyed Girl and now it's like they don't want to bring the mood down. But also now that's all I want to play just to see what. Oh my God! Can you imagine? Yeah. What, like, what what's gonna happen? Da 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 da. And everyone so, like stops dancing and then they just look around. Come on, everyone! Sha la la la. And it's just like <laughs> you know people yeah. crying and. Uh, that's that's the thing. The the do not plays. Yeah. They don't get asked to list any do not plays, but you do get them. Yeah. I had one recently. Do not play Foo Fighters. Why? Mm. Well, any Foo Fighters. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but the Brown Eyed Girl for Family. I'm just trying to think, like, why? Yeah. Someone's dead, or was it one of their ex's favourite songs? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Or was, um, I don't know. Yeah. But it's. But it now I'm make, fascinated. Yeah. Like, try can you do you reckon you can could I, try and can I ask find without out? asking? Yeah, I'm, go, you, I'm like, gonna you try. Got to spot, try and find who are like fr- maybe, maybe you want you want to go like one of the ushers. Well, funnily That's enough, go. the wedding is in Emsworth, which is literally my hometown. So, I'm hoping there'll be people there I know and I can be like, right, you know, after they've had a few drinks, I'll be like, okay, you know, we're mates, we go back a while. What's the deal with the old uh, between you, you could and try me? And try and just work it into like every little intro. Blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. And yeah. then just like, doom, 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 <laughs> doom, doom. And then, hey, nearly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nearly did it. Yeah. But yeah, who knows? But I'll try and find out. Uh, one m- last thing I had, because I only yes. really had two things to talk about, Paolo, and I was looking on my favorite drum group on Facebook, where it's just, it's basically us. Basically, the whole group is just people like me and you just moaning about wedding gigs and stuff. It's hilarious. But, um, oh, actually, I'll start with this. One person said that he played a wedding the other day and someone asked if they could play his kit for a Beatles song or asked the guitarist and the drummer wasn't really up for it but didn't really have much choice in it. And you'll love this. You do this, have a choice. The, yeah, you do have a choice. If you, you listen very much in, have a choice. By the way, all of the people on that group should listen to this because it's basically, you know, yeah. I feel like you, this podcast Have you posted called, about the show on there? Um, a little bit, but I need well, to do, do more. Then. I need to do more. Well, you get on Facebook. I'm Ooh, not on Facebook. I don't want to talk to my friends from school. <laughs> Um, I, uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't, <laughs> no, no, so this guy, not for me, not for me, <laughs> a guest from the wedding he was playing at, wanted to play a Beatles song, this is brilliant, Dan Keen, if you're listening, <laughs> I don't want to be your friend, <laughs> so he invited me, like they were part of like the cool chavy kids and they were like, do you want to come round? And I was like, yeah, okay, come play football. And then he went a few hours later and because you know it was all about going around someone's house then, wasn't it? Was this while you were at school? Was this recently? Yeah, yeah, this is okay. at school. Do you want to come around my house? You, want, you know. And then, and then he went, I'll oh, just to let you know, you're not coming around my house. You're just coming to our street. <laughs> and I was like, nah, see you later. Because <laughs> well, nah, you're not, not cool not enough to there. go in his house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, he's like he was going, oh, I don't want to be, oh, don't, I don't want people to think we're mates. Mm. Like, we're not that, we're not going around your house sort of mates. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you, Dan Keen. There you go. Well, I'm so, glad you got over it 20 years later. Yeah. Right. So this wedding gig, uh, <laughs> this guy, the guest wanted to play a Beatles song, and the guest turned up to the drum kit with some tea towels because Beatles used to play and record <laughs> with tea towels on the kit. So apparently a guest went up to the kit, taped tea towels down, and then played. And at that point, no one could hear the drums. And uh, he was just like, I think it's a bit weird. And everyone was like, don't let them play your kit. What the fuck? And I was like, oh, good. It isn't just me and you. <laughs> so anyway, there was another thing. I just had to tell you that one that was quite funny. We've never had someone put tea towels on my kit. Um, so someone else posted something that was interesting that I didn't know. The drummer for The Who, Zach Starkey, Ringo Starr's son, he now plays with an electric kit. 
for the Who and has done since 2019. I had no idea. Mm. And I looked it up a little bit. Most of the comments are just hate. It was a brilliant comment because, you know, sure. it's the internet. So anyone that yeah. enjoyed it would have just enjoyed it. They might as it. well have cast Ariel for The Little Mermaid with someone with a different skin colour. Yeah, exactly. It's the same. It's up there. It's up it's there. Up there <laughs> yeah. yeah. So someone put, saw yesterday in Florence. Or the God forbid, make the lead character in a computer game a woman. <laughs> Am I right? I don't even know what that was that to do with. Just Just people get annoyed when they're... Lead character is a woman. Yeah. It's a very, Ridiculous. it's weird, isn't it? Because it's a very specific, small niche of angry men, but it feels they like shout the they shout the loudest. So yeah. someone put horrible, awful, an insult to Keith Moon and the Who history. I'm going to sell or throw away my ticket for Florence. Such a big delusion. Yeah. So yeah. Vilfredo okay. Pareto isn't happy. And someone else, but saw yesterday. There's a ticket going then. Yeah. yeah saw yesterday going. in Florence. The sounds are fake. The acoustic set is a million times better. But it is weird because I watched some of the videos and it does seem to lack something. But it, it's all to do with hearing. You know, Pete Townsend's hearing's gone. I think Roger Daltrey's is gone. You know, Pete never finished writing the book. And yeah, it's just a bit. I don't know. Is it? Does it take away from the show a bit? But it's cool because it's obviously the best electric kit ever. Well, that's what I was going to say. It ain't going to be a Roland TV3, no, is it? It is Roland, just a but little, it's like... little plastic rubber pads, <laughs> you know. Yeah. He's only got a mesh net. Yeah. It's exactly. not going to be one of them, is it? No. It does look cool. But yeah, people, you know, if you go, if you go online and people are even talking about like there's a delay in the sound and it's not. You don't get that wash from the symbols. So, I don't know. It's interesting, but... Um, well, I think, if you know, actually, if the if the reason they're doing it is for their, their on-stage hearing, mm. fair play, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, totally. Really? I haven't seen any of you. I'll have to have a... Yeah. You see. Yeah. I'm sure someone at the gig filmed it. Yes. You know what I mean? Well, exactly. <laughs> Do you know what? That is <laughs> part of it. What a like, lovely callback. Yeah lovely stuff it's funny isn't it because it's like as much as it's annoying i was watching videos from blur at wembley last night because i was like i could have gone but i didn't and uh it's like thank god some people filmed you know <laughs> um so yeah i hate it when they they're filming in front of me but also thanks for filming thanks for the footage <laughs> <laughs> uh that's all i've got to talk about you got any other bits um other bits i other think bits, talk about youtube yeah, so we, um, for those who know and for those who don't, so currently we have a YouTube channel. Yeah. And at the moment we're just putting the episodes up mm. with just a blanket yeah. image, so it's really audio only. Yeah. But they're there because some people, some people use YouTube. Um, but we're just thinking of ways of, of populating the channel a little bit more. Mm. And when we chat to a guest... Mm. Sometimes we have a little chat before the recording. Sometimes we have a little chat after the recording. Yeah. Sometimes there's stuff in the middle we take out. Yeah. And what George is very kindly doing is going back through those that Zoom footage yeah. of us chatting with the guests and just clipping out some lovely little yeah. segments that maybe didn't make it into the episode. Yep. And we're going to sort of put them up as little YouTube exclusives. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it started from the Jack Geary episode, but with Jack, we very much did an hour, and that was the episode. And then I had a few things that I had to tell him, but not on the episode. Just because it was like a boring cheese story. Just your views on women, really. Just, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. You know? That took, you know, at least four more hours um, before we even got to my religious views. Direct quote, they're getting a little bit too big for their boots. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, I didn't say that. And, but we spoke to Jack for another hour or so, and we thought, God, this has been better than the episode. We should put this on YouTube. So that's what we're doing. And uh, I think it would just be nice. It's uh, a bit more free form. You know what I mean? Well, free form. Just some nice little bite sized chunks, really. Yeah. Just a few minutes long. Nothing too intensive. No. Um, and it's, I so think it's a bit more, I don't know raw as well because every episode you listen to listeners it's been edited a lot you know <laughs> there's a lot of ums yeah. when we first yeah, had guests, the amount of george's views i have to take <laughs> out 
uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but this is so you. It will seem I don't know. I was listening back to some of the footage, and it's like, oh, there's a lot of gaps, but it's good. That's how people talk, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So get ready for that. We don't know when we're going to put them up. Yeah, there won't be any sort of regularity to them. No, but they'll just they'll just crop up, and they'll they'll be YouTube only. Yeah, you know. They're not going to be released through your podcast apps. No. And they might just be a few minutes long. They might be a little bit longer. Yeah. But there's some little extra stuff there mm. for you. Mm. Is that all you want to say about YouTube? Yeah, I think so. I'll just say one more thing. Yeah. I think it's just interesting, isn't it? Because the episode the other day, I won't say which one, but there was a bit that I was like, that's gold. But it wasn't in the episode because it didn't work with, you know, things before and afterwards. Your views on <laughs> immigrants. <laughs> but now, uh, you can, uh, what did you say? My views on what? <laughs> immigrants. Oh, God, okay. I thought you said something else. Um, not that that's good. Um, but now it can be a bit more like if there was a moment in an episode, we can be like, right, let's get that in, you know? Um, and you can visually see us as well because it's going to be the video which has made me from think, the Zoom call. Yeah, I need to change my backdrop a bit now that I know we're going to be online with our faces. Yeah. You know. Tidy up that wank junction. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll, yeah, make an effort. Um, but yeah, that's all I've got to say. Yeah. Uh, well, speaking of uh, video calls, yeah. just one last little wedding thing. Uh, if I was on the Facebook group, I'd probably pop this on there. Um, got an email from our agency. Would... One of you, or a member of the band, be open to a video call with the client before the big day. Now, that's interesting, isn't it? I bet you said yes, happened. please. That's... <laughs> um, now, that, that, sometimes you might get... A, we, we provide a contact number, one of the band or two members of the band, and that is for contact on the day. Mm. On the day of the wedding. Essentially for emergencies, yeah. if something happens. Occasionally, we get a phone call before that from the venue mm. or from the bride and groom checking in, and it's annoying because mm. it's your big day, it ain't ours. <laughs> You've got other shit going on. <laughs> anyway, so my first question back to the agency was, why? Yeah. Why Why do they want a Zoom call? And the response I got, uh, I think it's just for some reassurance, they said, in quotes, for like 10 minutes just to know who we are actually having on the day at our wedding. <laughs> Now, the bad news for them is <laughs> they're only getting twenty five percent of the actual band. Yeah, it's peak July season. Mm. Uh, me and Neil are off doing our other better, more fun band. Mm. Um, I'm off seeing so Paolo Natini again. No, I'm not. But yeah, <laughs> and um, yeah, it's annoying, isn't it? But Archie said he'll have a he'll have a phone conversation with them. Mm. That's probably the best. But I'll end you with know, this story. I think they've read the bit in the contract that says, depths may be used. Yeah. And they're like, is this what we're getting? Depths will be used. Yeah, and you're getting three out of four. <laughs> How do you feel about a return to the drum let's, dumpster? Let's do it. What the hell is that? You got tossed into the right dumpster. Welcome back to the drum dumpster. Mm, it's been a while. Also, another good chance to put our photo of us with the bin on fire. Yeah. Um, from our photo shoot. Anyway, I saw a post on Reddit about a sort of drummer needing to to be quieter. I think they're playing in a garret. This is what is amazing, actually. There's a lot of Americans posting on Reddit. Mm. And what you forget, I get, what, I, what I forgot is like, all that you know, they put pics of their drum kit. They're all in garages, like their own or their living room mm. or their house. And it's like, oh yeah, their houses are so big, the garages are so big and so spaced out, sound ain't a problem. No. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're like, oh yeah, they can just fucking play in their living room and no one gives a shit. Mm. Or they've got basements. Mm. Anyway, someone's like, oh, we're playing in our garage, my band. The drums are just really loud. And obviously we've been down lots of rabbit holes about how to play quieter, all that sort of thing. Someone recommended these sticks. You know drumsticks, what they are, George, yeah? Vaguely. Yeah. Um, you know what hot rods are? Mm. Have you heard of the Vic Firth Root X Medium Rods? <laughs> I have now. Yeah. They are like 
sticks and hot rods combined, right? They are, if you're looking at a drumstick length, mm. I'd say 80% is drumstick and the last 20% is hot rod. That's weird. All right. And apparently, so you, you, you hit him with the hot rod end. Yeah. So they're quieter, but you've got more of a weight of a full stick. Oh, okay. So it's not all hot rod, baby. Yeah. But also, when you do like rim clicks, you know, yeah, cross yeah. sticks, yeah. you still get a stick. So apparently it's like... What are they called? A, I've got to see what they look like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vic Firth, yeah. Root X, R-U-T-E dash X, medium rods. Oh, wow. See what I mean? Yeah, they're weird. So they're sort of... I mean, it makes sense. You can get solid rim shots and cross sticks, but just in general, it's all a little bit of a quieter volume. Yeah. Weird, though, aren't they? Yeah. I'm not sure I like the dark wood finish. No. Um, But 30 quid as well. This is it. There's no, you know, no eagerness to buy. Did I see you share a story on Instagram of our friend Jack? Yeah, that was what I was also going to say. Yes. Thank you, Jack. Jack Aboose. He's uh, he's been in touch and he has started the road to the quiet drum kit, basically. So I don't know if it's still there, but he shared a story. The start of the acoustic to electronic kit conversion. So basically, he's got Evans DB1 skin. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, so he's he's beginning it. He's listened to our pod, heard us talking about you know. Well, let's listen to the pod and then start learning drums. Yeah, that's mental. That is mental. That's great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but I've you know I've said keep us in the loop with that. So hopefully, yeah, we'll get to see uh, how that how that plans out. Yeah, but definitely. yeah, thanks for getting in touch, Jack. As always. Yeah, uh, and other people, you can also get in touch: email, Twitter, Instagram. Actually, uh, are we going to set up a threads? A what? Threads. What's that? It's the new Twitter, but by Facebook. Is it? It's called Threads. Too many things nowadays. You can set up an account via your Instagram. Yeah, we can do that. That's how you do it. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know if it's worth it, but could be Twitter is shit. Last shout out, we got a message from James Gillingham. Oh, yeah. Jim. Mate, the pod was so funny this week. Top work. And then a sort of crying, laughing emoji. So thanks for that, James. Um, and didn't he also? I know we're cramming so much. Yeah, in, yeah. Send you a little voice note which you forwarded to me. Oh my god! Yeah. Symbol chat. Fuck, we haven't talked about that. Yeah, he did. Um, well, I was talking about B20s and B8s, the alloys. Yep. When you sent that through to me and he started talking, I thought he's gonna fact check me and essentially say everything I said was wrong. <laughs> um, one of the main things he said was that John Bonham used to play B8 symbols. Yeah. So, whilst you know, and my assumptions probably wrong. But I think it's a generous time. B twenties are good, mm. B eights are bad. John Bonham played with the B eight. But he said it was something to do with and I could be wrong because I listened to it and then it was about two weeks ago. I listened to it in a field in a scout hut in Limington. I'm not even gonna try and make a joke about that. What what uh, why were you in a scout hut? Uh it was sort of where a wedding oh, was okay. that we were playing. Right, fair. Yeah. I thought you'd be and it was a scout, a scout hall and then all these little rooms off the side and it's like this is where the pedo shit happens <laughs> in these little rooms. Anyway, um, how do I even talk about symbols after that? Yeah. Paste or pasty yes. or whatever they're called. Apparently, they they're better as B8s than B20s or something like that. I think is what he. Oh, like yeah, said. he said like their B8s are quite good. Yeah, and that some do like B minor and stuff. They do B12s, which are pretty good. Yeah, but anyway, best thing is. Uh, go and try a symbol out and if you like it buy it yeah or just if you've always wanted a K just buy a K don't really bother about the sound <laughs> and you live your life yeah um, cool right <laughs> that'll do us yes <laughs> lovely stuff <laughs> so I was having a swig of nature's milk yep and uh, yeah lovely stuff yeah rattled through yeah thank you for listening we'll see you next time bye bye thank you for listening to Drum and Drummer You can find us on Instagram at Drum and Drummer Podcast. And you can send us an email to drumanddrummerpod at gmail.com. Remember, just pick up the sticks and twat.